Ah, oh, the cha-cha is no more ridiculous than this review itself. Hello there, Criterion 8 here. Number 326, Whit Stillman's Metropolitan. Get into the groove of things. Oh boy, was I pleasantly surprised with this one. 1990, 99 minutes, color in Earl English. Uh. So, this, uh, yeah, again, I went into this thinking, oh god, this is going to suck, because I'm not looking forward to the last days of Disco, which is going to be next season, I think it's 46 or something. But, uh, so I thought, okay, Whit Stillman, if he can cast Chloe Sevigny in a movie, then I have no hope. But this one was like, you know what, honestly, Metro, this one, I was like, okay, this is actually kind of digging. It reminded me a lot of, um, like, kind of St. Elmo's Fire, except uh, they're all rich, you know, whereas in, I think in that one, was it uh, Demi Moore's, I think, character's like the rich girl. So, I'm out of breath. Anyway, let's try to, let's try to soldier on. So, let me tell you all about this one. So, basically, this guy, Tom, uh, Tom Townsend. He's kind of like this guy who kind of got, um, whose parents, like he, like she, like his parents divorced and remarried and she, he kind of like gained richness or something. So he kind of has a, like a love-hate relationship with the rich because he came from like kind of a more of a working class background. I think that's how it worked. Anyway, he goes to this ball and ends up trying to catch a, get a taxi at the same time as this guy, Nick Smith, who is one of the, like the elite and so he ends up kind of getting mixed up with this crowd uh, they're, they're known as the sally what do they call them i'll look this up because i can't remember the name of it the sally i'm going to open up the the page the sally something rat pack they're known as the rat they'll just call them the rat pack so um yeah and then uh, so he meets uh, tom meets all the friends there's charlie who's like this really you know who's always spouting off like philosophical quotations and ideas and things like that um there's jane who i for the life of me i can't remember actually can't remember can't tell any of the uh the women jane sally and cynthia i couldn't remember who's who for the life of me actually i think cynthia's the the proverbial uh woman's man if you know what i mean and uh anyone else but the, but the one we're concerned about is audrey audrey is the one who's she's the she's the shy member she's the quiet one um, she loves, uh, like, Jane Austen and reading, you know, a lot of, you know, historical, like, romantic fiction and things like that. Tom and Audrey, you know, develop a friendship. Uh, Audrey falls hard for Tom. Uh, Tom's kind of obsessed about, still kind of off and on obsessed about his uh, ex-girlfriend, Serena, Serena Slocum. And uh, they, so they kind of, you know, kind of have an off and on thing. Um, Audrey's a little distraught by this. Uh, she really wants Tom to notice her, you know. And, uh, yeah, so basically the whole movie's about kind of just, like, these kind of rich kids who, you know, living out, you know, living their lives, you know, during Christmas. It's during Christmas break uh, from college, so they all have time to spend, and they all, they, they go to balls, and they have after parties that last all night, you know. So it's kind of a, it is a coming-of-age story in a sense, but, I mean, they're a little older than I'm, I'm used to seeing, you know. You think of movies like... Uh, my Life as a Dog, or Rat Catcher, George Washington, ones we've seen. The kids are a lot younger, um, but in this one, you know, they're more or less all adults, you know, so. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a different story. Um, what else? And, yeah, and then um, Serena, Tom's ex, is also seeing a guy named Rick who Nick can't stand. Um, Nick ends up telling lies about him or fabricating stories about Rick and Rick Nick is also Nick ends up being seen as sort of a they end up kind of not liking Nick very much um, and uh, about halfway quarter of the sixty percent sixty percent of the way through the movie he ends up leaving the group and um, and that's where I'm gonna leave it um, basically it is kind of a love story between Tom and Audrey and um, I'm gonna leave it at there. Um, because I want you guys to see it for yourself and check it out. Because I, I like this one. I liked it a lot, actually. I don't know if it's my favorite this season. But um, right now, I think it's probably in the top ten. I just, you know... I, you know, they always say never judge a book by its cover. And I've always been like, no, I will judge the hell out of some covers, you know. 
and I do, I still do, but, um, you know, and I judged it just from, I judged it from that name, because I know a movie that this guy did that I'm not looking forward to. But this one, but I looked at the cast, and I'm like, I have no clue who any of these people are. So I'm like, well, I'll give it a chance. And sure enough, it's, you know, it's uh, it worked out in the end. Um, again, it wasn't perfect. I think the soundtrack was really repetitive after a while. I think there were only like three or four songs composed for the whole movie. Um, and they just kept looping some song like, I need love. It's like just playing over and over and over again throughout the movie. And so that a repetitive soundtrack is kind of uh, a little iffy, but... Um, but it was fun to see them cha-cha, so, you know, and, uh, yeah, so anyway, that's all I can, uh, I can mention about that, I'm just reading the chapter, chapter titles, I like when they, when they give these two, um, so anyway, Metropolitan, a fantastic movie, um, very in cool little movie about the rich, you know, see, you know, and like, oh, you know, it's just, they're very, they're, they're very snotty, and, but it's kind of, I don't know, it makes for an interesting little ride, you know. I'm going to give it an A. I'm giving it, giving it an A. This has so far been one of the best seasons, um, and I don't know if that's just because I've been, you know, giving, I've been, I feel like I've been a, getting a, being, becoming a better reviewer or not, but I feel like this, we've, we've seen so many good movies so far, and we're already, you know, quarter of the way through the season. Um, and only a few clunkers that I can think of, like Angel at My Table, or um, uh, Masculine Feminine or Tales of Hoffman, you know. So, yeah, I, again, this is one of the best, and uh, this, will be, this will be added into the set, you know. Um, again, I highly doubt, I highly doubt I'll get um, last, you know, the, there's the Witt Stillman, the Witt Stillman trilogy that came out a few months ago that has this, uh, Last Days of Disco in Barcelona, which I think is 807. So, you know, so more than, but thankfully Metropolitan got reissued on Blu-ray, so I'll be picking that up in, in due time. So anyway, um, that's all I have to say for this one, A, um, supplements, um, there's commentary, I like, like, I actually wouldn't mind hearing the commentary, because they have the actors, uh, Christopher Igerman, who played Nick, and Taylor Nichols, who played, uh, Charlie, who... Who, funny enough, are actually the stars of Barcelona. That's I think that is cool. That um, as well as um, as well as uh, no, I think it's just them. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I recognize anybody else. Oh, I want to mention Fred. I like Fred. Fred is hilarious. Fred is the comic relief, and I wish I had a friend like Fred. I, I wanted to. Me I did want to mention him. Fred. Fred's a, this guy. He doesn't have a lot of lines. He is basically comic relief. He's kind of like this guy who just gets the first to get drunk and. Um, I think his first line throughout the whole movie is when, when Tom meets them all, like he's asleep, he's like asleep in a chair. I, I can't remember, but but he wakes up when uh, Nick puts on a cha cha record and and, uh, and his first line is ooh cha cha. And you know throughout the movie he's he's kind of you know almost almost a one liner kind of guy, you know. Um, but yeah, I did like him. He's 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 a fun character. Um, I did I didn't want to go go the whole review without mentioning him, so I like Fred, and I, I had to give it up for him, you know. So anyway, um, yes, A, and then what else? Uh, supplements. Um, there's some outtakes. There's a, um, there's a short memorial to, I think, one of the line directors who died a, a few years after the movie was, was finished. Um, there are two scenes of, I guess, an alternate casting um, at one point, uh, Lloyd Kaufman played a record producer, and um, Lloyd Kaufman, who was the head of uh, Troma, Troma Pictures, and uh, it was really interesting to see him, you know, dark hair and beard and all that. Um, and uh, the character who played, uh, character of Nick was actually played by uh, Will Kemp, who played Rick Van Slon Slonker, who's uh, sort of like, who's Nick's rival, you know. And, um, yeah, so it was interesting to see, you know, different characters and all that, you know, especially with one that ended up being cast in the movie as another role. You know, that's always cool. And then the trailer, which is hilarious, I think, you know, I've, I've always toyed around with the idea of, you know, I think eventually we may start toying around with the idea of watching the trailers before I watch the movie. Um, I've thought about that, but I, 
you know, right now I don't, I, I kind of like, you know, I feel like watching the trailer kind of spoils some of the movie sometimes because you see scenes that, you know, yeah, you're seeing them out of order, but um, still, I don't know. So anyway, um, Metropolitan, fantastic movie. I'm giving it an A. What a treat, what a treat, what a treat. So, pick it up. Hey, so, that's it for today. Um, so, the plan is, I have decided that um, tomorrow we will not have a review. Um, we're going to do the Louis Mal films on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. So that means Sunday, Murmur of the Heart, Monday, uh, Monday, La Comme Lucienne, Tuesday, uh, Au Revoir Les Enfants, and then uh, Wednesday, uh, hopefully, yeah, Wednesday, uh, Late Spring, Thursday, Rodiana, and then... Um, and then, yeah, and then hopefully by that point, hopefully by that point, uh, Fists in the Pocket will come. I, uh, I've got to get out to that old li my old library and see if I can't find a copy there, because that's the only way that I'll be able to, that's right now, unless it ships within the next couple days. Um, worst comes to worst, I can see if it's on, um, see if it's on Filmstruck. I could sign up for Filmstruck and watch it there, and then just review the supplements at a later time, but, you know, again, I... I really don't want to do that if I can avoid it, you know, because it's just it's just easier if, uh, you know. And it, then again, I mean, like, and I do it be easy if uh, Criterion put all the supplements on there, but, you know, I think right now, right now I think they're obsessed with, the, what is it, uh, Blood Simple, because that, the Coen Brothers movie that just came out. Uh, speaking of movies, uh, speaking of, uh, anyway, no, that, that, that wasn't going to be a good transition. Uh, I was at Barnes & Noble today, and I decided to have a bonus round. I got the Bad Sleep Well, because it was the cheapest one that I picked up. Um, yeah, I'm looking at the... All of them came in at the same time, and I ordered um, the Complete Mr. Arcade because I do want that one. I'm thinking that I may have to put some back. Uh, like, you know, I, I mean, I ordered the, you know, the... The, uh, the, the set with... Uh, the, the one, the set, the set with, uh, what is that? The Sage Spectacle Renoir set and the Andre Vita set. Um, I think, you know, in fact, while I've got you guys here, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, explore Amazon and see if I can't find, see if I can't find a, a French Can Can separately. I wonder if. It's sold separately. Uh, no, not a French can. French can can. Oh, so maybe it's not? Are you serious? Is it not, like, not happy? I don't know what the hell that is. Skirt day? What the hell is that? So French can can is, I guess, is only... Oh, so there is a Blu-ray of it. There is a Blu-ray for it, but it's... That's, you know, it's not, you know, the set was never released on Blu-ray. They seriously need to s separate those because I don't really want the Golden Coach or Elena and her men. I feel like it would be very expensive to buy them. Yeah, there is a dual format version of it, but maybe... Yeah, nothing. That sucks. Well, again, maybe I'll have to just, that'll just be one that I'll never own. Um, or I'll just buy, I won't buy it this round. Because I do want the Vi Andre Vita. I mean, again, Canal was great. Ashen's Diamond was awesome. A generation I wasn't crazy about, but I feel like if I watched it again, I could get into it a little more. So I do want that set. So more than likely, I'm going to get the Completeness Archon, the Andre Vita, and, th and then um, Seven Samurai. Get it, definitely getting Seven Samurai. So those will probably be it. Because, again, I just I don't know if I can afford all of them right now. So, that's it for today, and thank you for watching Metropolitan um, Morals, 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 uh, gosh, um, don't be hoity-toity, I don't know, uh, unless you're really into that kind of shit, you know, don't, uh, don't get, don't, uh, don't dismiss the can-can, you know, and, uh, yeah. So that's it for me. Thank you for watching. We will see you on Sunday for 
Murmur of the Heart. And until then, cha-cha-cha.